fist fight between Mike Tyson and Razor Ruddock would soon become one of the most popular fights in the history of pay-per-view boxing. Although Ruddock was not well known by the general public, boxing experts were well aware of his legendary punching power. Razor Ruddock is the single hardest puncher in boxing. And by that I mean for one shot, he can knock out anybody. Holyfield, Foreman, uh, Mike Tyson, I don't care who the other guy is. If Razor Ruddock is right, and if he can land one of those home run punches, believe me, he clears the bases. So you're going to see something here that you've never seen before when we put together these two gladiators. The fight took place March 18th in the Starfield Arena of the Mirage Hotel and Casino. Through the first five rounds, each fighter went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Clearly, it was an old-fashioned brawl, a fight to the finish. In the center of the ring, and right for the finish. In the sixth round, Ruddick surprised Tyson as he landed hard shots to Tyson's head, clearly winning his round. In the seventh, when Tyson retaliated by knocking Ruddick to the ropes, the rock, Richard Steele, suddenly and unexpectedly stopped the fight. Richard Steele tried to defend his decision. At the time I stopped the fight, uh, Razor Ruddock was hurt. And he was seriously hurt and was, and was helpless and against the ropes. Needless to say, not everybody agreed with Richard Steele. I don't think the people who were paying for this will ever accept Steele again. All I wanted to do was hurt him one time, then I was going to put on a combination, but I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be, excuse me, I wouldn't be able to put the combination together with his defense up. So what I had to do was um, get him in a state, like hit him one time, let him wobble or something, and then put the combination on. That was the plan. Well, you know what I mean? I can't control the referee's decision because he's being more objective than I am because he's not involved. But I would love to hurt him and finish him and put him out. How was he punching? Was it hurting like him? Like a son, he punches like a little kid. However, everybody involved, fighters, fans, managers, and promoters did agree on one thing. The public deserves a rematch, and they'll get it. You can see on June 28th, live and in living color, emanating from the oasis in the desert, the Mirage Hotel, Tyson Reddick 2. It ain't over till it's over. This one promises to be bigger and better than the first one, because this time, it ain't over till it's over. Don't miss it. It's Tyson Reddick. The rematch, Friday, June 28th, live on Pay Per View. Tyson told everybody he was going to destroy Razor Ruddock. He didn't. He told the world he was going to take Ruddock out early and that Ruddock would be humiliated. He didn't come close. So maybe this time he should tell Razor Ruddock. Tyson versus Ruddock, the rematch, live from the Mirage, June 28th. See it on pay-per-view TV. Call your local cable company now. the number one contender, Donovan Razor Ruddick, the number two contender. The two biggest punchers in boxing unloaded their bombs on each other in their first collision in March. Until the referee's decision to stop the fight set up a storm of controversy in a wild scene in the ring. That controversy has led to a rematch this Friday. And as he prepares, Tyson appears fighting mad. Today, a preview of Tyson against Ruddick, the second time around. He's rematch on pay-per-view between Mike Tyson and Razor Ruddick. Alex Wallow is in Las Vegas to preview the fight for us. And Alex, the intrigue of the heavyweight division has always been power, and both of these men bring that big punch into the ring. Frank, these two men are clearly the hardest hitters in the division, and that's one reason it's a great fight for the fans. Also, it's a rare opportunity to see the number one and number two contenders fight each other. Generally, they just sit back and wait for a title shot, especially with the tens of millions of dollars at stake in the heavyweight division. 
the winner of this fight will get a shot at Evander Holyfield, but the loser slips back in line and wonders why he didn't play it safe. To set up our look ahead at the rematch, let's first look back to March 18th and highlights of Tyson versus Ruddick first time around. Mike Tyson swept the first five rounds on every card with the best punch, this left hook in round three that dropped Ruddick to the canvas. Tyson continued to throw more and land more until the closing seconds of round six. When Razor Ruddick put together his only sustained barrage of the fight, catching Mike with a series of power punches. And for just a few seconds, it looked like Buster Douglas overpowering Tyson in Tokyo. But this time, Mike Tyson remained confident, didn't panic, and reasserted control in the very next round with that classic combination, which put Razor Ruddick on the verge of a knockout when referee Richard Steele shockingly jumped in to stop the fight. Generally, we say the referee's controversial decision, but there really was very little controversy in this case. Virtually everyone not directly involved agreed the stoppage was premature. And so the rematch, the first rematch for each fighter in their pro careers. And clearly, the biggest adjustment has to come from the loser of the first fight, Razor Ruddick. A young fighter named Donovan Ruddick first attracted attention five years ago with a decision over former champion Mike Weaver. He relied almost totally on his boxing skills, primarily a sharp jab that earned him the nickname Razor. But after this fight, Ruddick began to change his style. Instead of precision jabs, he began to use his left hand for spectacular power hooks, as Michael Dokes found out last year. On March 18th against Mike Tyson, it was Razor Ruddick the puncher, without any trace of the boxer he once was, who threw out his game plan and went bombs away from the opening bell. Look at the numbers. Against Weaver, 25 jabs and only four power punches around, whereas in March, only six jabs and 19 power punches per round. A total transformation. One other significant factor in the first fight, Razor's conditioning. As early as here in round two, he was holding, apparently tired, unable to sustain any offensive pressure, and forced throughout the fight to grab onto Mike Tyson and rest instead of letting his hands go. The numbers show that in almost seven rounds, he only attempted 174 punches and landed less than 10 per round. Even for heavyweights, that's very low. And he clinched almost as many times as he landed a punch. So Razor Ruddick must combine boxing skill and punching power, use his jab to take advantage of his huge edge and reach, be in shape to throw more punches, and above all, use the experience of the first fight to stay relaxed in order to perform at his peak in the biggest fight of his career. And what about the winner of the first fight, Mike Tyson? The man who was granted boxing immortality when he was still a teenager. The man who became the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history with this win over Trevor Bourbon. At the time, it seemed no one could stand up to Tyson's powerful ring presence. He was suddenly very rich and very famous. But in 1988, when his boxing career was soaring, his life outside the ring seemed to spin out of control and made non-stop tabloid headlines. Then last year, the unimaginable loss of his title to Buster Douglas in the biggest upset in the history of the sport. The aura that surrounded Mike Tyson was suddenly destroyed. In recent weeks, the headlines have returned, this time detailing what many see as the deterioration of Mike Tyson in and out of the ring. Critics pointed to Tyson's bizarre statements at a press conference last month as evidence of his shaky state of mind. Oh, man, I can't wait to the 28th. I'm going to make you my girlfriend. Can I say something to you? Uh, do I have to sit here and listen to this moron? You know you're really a transvestite and you like me. Earlier this month, after a sparring session, Tyson vented his frustration at an ABC Sports camera. Rumors continue to circulate that one of the causes of Mike's anger is his volatile relationship with promoter Don King, which has reportedly been strained by the non-payment of millions of dollars owed to Mike, and perhaps more importantly, the failure to get Mike a shot to regain the championship belt in the 16 months since he lost it.
Tyson and King appeared at a press conference Wednesday designed to diffuse the rumors. It's unfortunate that y'all don't seem to believe what I say when I say it. You know what I mean? I love you, Mike. You love me, Mike? I love you. All right. But the other questions surrounding Mike Tyson remain. Is the fury gone? Is he finished as the unconquerable force in the heavyweight division? Has he begun an irreversible decline? To get a sense of where Mike Tyson is today as a fighter and how he's responded to his first loss as a pro, the best evidence is the three fights he's had since Buster Douglas. Comeback fight number one. Of course Henry Tillman wasn't close to a meaningful opponent and of course the fight didn't prove anything. But you can't say a one-punch knockout is evidence of deterioration. Then Alex Stewart, who was a meaningful opponent, a man who had given Evander Holyfield a very tough fight. Alex Stewart also lasted less than a round. Yes, Stewart froze, but again, it is tough to criticize Mike Tyson. And most recently against Razor Ruddock. Critics correctly point out that Tyson took as many punches here in the sixth round as he has in any fight except for Douglas. But it's also true that Mike totally dominated the rest of the fight and came back from the punishment to stop Ruddick in the very next round. He never looked flustered or lost his confidence the way he did in Tokyo. In my opinion, reports of Mike Tyson's demise as a fighter have been greatly exaggerated. What's changed is our perception of him. We were also shocked by the loss to Buster Douglas. We're constantly looking for negatives so we don't get fooled again. And because of the outlaw image that Mike likes to project these days, he may not be as likable to a lot of people. And finally, because of his running battles with the sports media, he gets lousy press. But go back to the stretch of fights where, Mike, where people say that Mike Tyson was at his peak against Tyrell Biggs, Larry Holmes, Tony Tubbs, and Michael Spinks. And I think you'll find pretty much the same fighter, a ferocious puncher. Critics say his skills have deteriorated, but back then he didn't really jab enough either, and he got hit by his share of punches. But none of those opponents could match the power of Razor Ruddick, who was probably the best fighter Tyson has ever beaten. The key then, as it is now, is training hard so he's in condition to throw combinations, which take advantage of the two things that make him so special, his power and his speed. If he pays the price in the gym, I think he can regain the title and keep it as long as he continues to work hard. We'll be back with Mike Tyson after these messages. Mike Tyson, Mike, I'm sure you're aware of all of the uh, cover stories that have been written about you recently saying that you are a fighter who is in decline. What's your side of the story on that? I mean, it's very difficult for me, I mean, to change people's opinions. Anyone that's, you know, I mean, an avid fan of boxing would tell, you know, I mean, there's no deterioration in my style or else my skills. Because as you say, if you see the other fighters I fought and you compare them with Ray the Ruddick, I mean, it's very, it's very ridiculous to say that. The only person that can say that is somebody, you know what I mean, has a personal dislike. But absolutely, they don't know what they're talking about, one. Well, let's talk about a few of the points specifically. Um, you had a press conference with Don King last Wednesday that uh, looked like a peace conference, but there have been reports about uh, a trouble there, primarily because of the fact that you're not in position for a, re a fight for the title, another shot at the title that you lost. I is that accurate? How eager are you for a rematch? Um, well, you know I mean? You only fight one fight at a time, and I, it's, it's not true. I was never, um, I would love to have a fight with Evander Holyfield, but I was never um, in Toma because I didn't get a title shot. And I mean, um, he's champion of the world. He knows that he can't claim the championship without fighting me. What about the upcoming fight? What did you learn about Ruddick in the first fight? Well, you know, I know he's a pretty good fighter, and but you know, I, I used to know I could beat Ruddick. Hardest punch you ever faced? Yeah. What kind of adjustments yeah. do you make for the rematch? Well, I'm just in great shape. I mean, intense on um, velocity from that fight. Do you have a game plan when you go in, or you just try to go in and knock the other guy's head off? You know, I never have a game plan. Really? Because just in case you have a game plan, a game plan might not work, I and mean, then you're confused. It seemed in the first fight that there were moments when uh, you got a little bit bored, especially in rounds four and five, after you had them down in round three. You said you got bored. Is that possible to get bored in a fight uh, for the well, you heavyweight know, uh, fight like that? Sometimes, you know, I get lackadaisical. I mean, because um, I get so into myself, and I get lackadaisical sometimes. Is it tougher for you now that you're fighting, when we first started out, you were fighting every uh, every couple of weeks, it seemed. Is it tougher for you to stay focused on boxing now that you're fighting, well, there's well, so much time between fights? Well, this fight, um, there wasn't much time in between. We just got right back and forth, which was good, I believe. 
and I, mean, I stayed in pretty decent shape, and I'm, I'm at fighting sh weight right now. But, I mean, it doesn't bother me. You know, I stay in shape when I'm in the gym. With all the distractions uh, and temptations that uh, come with being a, a, a perhaps the most famous athlete in boxing, one of the most famous athletes in the world, is it possible for you to stay as focused and as enthusiastic about boxing as you did when you were 19 or even 20 when you were a champion? I mean, um, it's funny because you have, you have different, you have different um, thoughts in your mind. You know, you know, at 19, you're, you're in different situations, you think about different things. Now, you know, I think about, you know, I mean, you're, I'm more mature in the situation. And I, I feel I'm a, I'm a better fighter because of that, that I'm more mature. You know what I mean? Before, I was just a wild, reckless guy. You know what I mean? This is the, the nice Mike Tyson today. What happened to that wacko who knocked my camera out the, uh, about a couple of weeks ago? I was, you know, I was just in that mood. I'm sorry. You know, what was that mood? I mean, what is that mood? I mean, I was, in, I was one of those insane moods. I was in training. I was intense. And I, I just, I was just radical. I wasn't in the mood for the camera. You know what I mean? When I'm in the Prediction gym, on the fight. Mike Tyson knocks Ray the out. Good luck to you, Michael. Thanks Thank for coming by. We talked earlier today with the number two heavyweight contender in the world, a man who thinks he's got a heck of a chance to beat Mike Tyson, Razor Ruddick. Let's listen. Is the bad blood between you two fellas uh, real or is it just hype? Uh, I don't have any, um, uh, I, didn't, I don't think there's no hype. I, it's just the way he's been carrying himself. I mean, uh, I, I haven't been in, initiating the um, attack on, on that bad blood stuff because I don't hate anyone. But it's just the way he's been carrying on. I just don't want to um, even try to waste my time thinking about the way he's going on. I just let it go by. In what ways will the experience of the first fight help you this time around? Well, I think it, um, we exactly we knew exactly what we did wrong, uh, what we did right, and we're just going to try to get it right this time. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. It's always more difficult to make a prediction about a fight when a puncher is involved, and it's very tough when the two hardest hitters in the sport get together, and despite all the pre-fight hype, you can be sure that both men came out of their first fight with a very healthy respect for the other man's power. In the first fight, the referee's premature stop has denied Mike Tyson a conclusive dramatic victory. This time I think he'll get it. Tyson by KO, inside six rounds. Whatever happens, we'll be right back here in Las Vegas on Wide World of Sports next Saturday to report on it, hopefully to interview the fighters, and to cover live the first title defense of one of boxing's hottest young fighters. James Lights Out Tony, who scored a sensational knockout victory last month, overcoming 17 to 1 odds over then unbeaten champion Michael Nunn. Michael Nunn was considered one of the, the best fighters anywhere in boxing. Tony stopped him, needing a knockout to win, got it in round 11. So it's Tony against the number one IBF contender, Reggie Johnson, next Saturday. Now let's go back to Frank in New York. Okay, thank you, Alex. Boxing, basketball, and biking. We hope you've enjoyed our day on Wide World of Sports. A final word on the Tyson versus Reddick 2. ABC Sports would like you to know that it has entered into a promotional agreement which provides ABC with a share of the revenue from the Tyson versus Reddick 2 pay-per-view telecast. Next Saturday, join us on the Pro Bowlers Tour for the PBA Oregon Open in a wide world of sports. Undefeated James Tony defends his IBF middleweight title against Reggie Johnson. Of course, you'll see that live. Plus, the American Championship Racing Series continue with the Hollywood Gold Cup thoroughbred racing at its very finest from the two tracks out in California. So be with us then. Good night, everybody. Before the last fight, Mike Tyson told everybody he was going to destroy Razor Ruddock. He didn't. He told the world he was going to take Ruddock out early and that Ruddock would be humiliated. He didn't come close. So maybe this time he should tell Razor Ruddock. Tyson versus Ruddock, the rematch. Live from the Mirage, June 28th. See it on pay-per-view TV. Call your local cable company now. We mentioned to you a bit earlier in Sports Center, Julio Cesar Chavez's fight next Friday night, a week from tomorrow, against Harold Brazier has been canceled because Chavez suffered a cut over his nose that required about eight stitches. That much we do know for sure. What we don't know for sure, however, is Mike Tyson. What's he going to do with Razor Ruddick? More importantly, what's he going to do with Ruddick after he deposits of him? And then what about George Foreman and uh, Evander Holyfield? Some of the questions are about to be answered. This must be a boxing first. The heavyweight champion of the world is chasing after the number one challenger to fight him. And he can't catch him. Evander Holyfield's promoter, Dan Duva, bid more than $50 million for the right to stage a Holyfield-Tyson fight. Now, under purse bid regulation, 
the champion is entitled to 75% of the take, or in this case, $37.5 million for Holyfield and $12.5 million for the challenger Tyson. But Tyson and his promoter, Don King, say that in this case, the challenger is really the star attraction, and therefore he should get a bigger slice of the pie. Say, 55-45. I don't expect you to negotiate with me on camera, but is it uh, fair to say that a 55-45 split is out of the question? It's completely out of the question. It's completely out of the question. There's no chance that that would happen. That would be completely unfair to Evander Holyfield. To, for a 55-45 split would cost Evander Holyfield almost $10 million. 20% of $50 million is $10 million. Evander Holyfield is not going to give Mike Tyson $10 million plus the opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. Meanwhile, Don King charges that Duva is demanding options on Tyson. That's an old King trick in the negotiations that seemingly are going nowhere. We want to want to take all. And the want to take all, if they win the fight, let them have their purse and they can have a larger purse. We're not arguing about that money. Tell them to come with clean hands. Remove the options. Remove all of these uh, conditions. Let's fight. See, in this way, we get the fight on, we ain't got no problem. Under the current purse bid arrangement, Tyson could, in fact, make about twice as much money if he fought George Foreman next. And those negotiations are far more serious at the moment than a Tyson Holyfield fight. Now, through all this, Tyson continues to prepare for his rematch with Razor Ruddock, which takes place a week from tomorrow night in Las Vegas. Friday night with referee Richard Steele, Nowhere near the ring, the pre-fight hype has included plenty of name-calling and financial bickering. What a shocker that is in boxing. Cartoonist Bob Engelhart offers his perspective in this week's View from the Last Row. This Friday, Mike Tyson fights Razor Call Me Donovan Ruddick in beautiful Las Vegas. Hey, it's deja vu all over again. Remember what happened last March between the king, the ref, the street kid, and his gentleman friend, the razor? Hey, the ref won and everybody else got a rematch. Now, Ruddick's manhood has been questioned, so he's ready to give Tyson the kiss of death. But to Tyson, Ruddick is just a speed bump on the highway to Holyfield. Okay, that fight again Friday night, uh, the rematch. Richard Steele will not be refereeing that one. We'll hear more from Tyson, the fighter. He'll talk about the, the real Mike Tyson, Tyson, the father, when we come back on Sports Center. <music> After the first Tyson Ruddick fight was stopped so suddenly, the rematch. After plenty of bickering, uh, the rematch is set for Friday in Las Vegas. Now, in past years, June has been hunting season for Tyson. Take a look at what he's done in past Junes. Those are all first-round knockouts, folks. The last being, of course, Henry Tillman in June of 1990. But that was the old Tyson. Will the same Tyson step into the ring Friday? Fatherhood and time tend to mellow men, and mellow was not the best mode for a fighter. Tyson talked about his new life recently with Charlie Steiner. Is this the real Mike Tyson, who throws things at cameras, including his fists? Or is this the real Mike Tyson, the doting daddy of 13-month-old D'Amato? Is this the real Mike Tyson, who has had more battles with the media, it seems, than he's had in the ring? Or is this the real Mike Tyson, the occasionally accommodating public figure who signs autographs for his fans? The appeal of Mike Tyson seems to be these contradictions. Which Tyson will show up on which day? On this day, the former heavyweight champion brought his son and was charming and thoughtful about his line of work. People say, are you violent? You know what I mean? They make that statement all the time, thinking that I go on ramp. I'm, I'm very violent, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's the line of my job. The line of my job is very violent, and that's just the way I am as an individual as far as my occupation's concerned. As Tyson speaks of his violence, he softly plays with his child. Say hi, Charlie. The model. Say hi, Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. I don't think like the average person thinks. 
I can't wait to the 28th. I'm gonna make you my girlfriend. Tyson prides himself on being unpretentious. He makes no bones about the fact that he doesn't like people who are. I can't wait to get a hold of you, you little pretty thing, you. His verbal shots at Donovan Ruddock, he says, were designed to puncture what he perceived to be Ruddock's overly proper nature. It kills me when I see these guys, they get their suits on and they start, well, directly, my addition to precarity for your comprehension, all endeavor to exclaim any more profound in the future from this part. And it's just all, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? To think of it, look at these guys. He knows, you know what I mean? He, you know, I mean? This is not really him. That's all a facade. Mike Tyson has never had a warmer relationship with the media. This recent 31-paragraph USA Today article chronicled his recent transgressions. Some of them painfully real, some of them rumored. I'm not asking any pity, but no one ever comes to the source. They always say, I have a source. No one ever comes to the real source and say, Mike, did you do this and do that? Thinking probably, say, I will tell you the truth. If I did anything, and that's outrageous and ironic, which I'm known to do, I'll say, yeah, I did it. Even though you guys put me through the, um, the hell that I go through and all this stuff, I actually, I, believe it or not, I love this. I love fighting. And it is also clear that he loves his son. Oh, Tyson was sent a personal invitation to fight by champ Evander Holyfield. Half-page ad set to run tomorrow and Tuesday in the Las Vegas papers. Show Holyfield with his title belts with the words, Hey, Mike, let's get it on. They will in October or November. When Mike Tyson fought Razor Ruddock in March, it was a brutal fight. Each punch thrown was meant to be the last. The fight was stopped in the seventh. Controversy had just begun. Tyson versus Ruddock, the rematch. Live from the Mirage, June 28th. See it on pay per view TV. Call your local cable company now. We'll give Razor Ruddock a second chance this Friday night in Las Vegas. Moments after Richard Steele signaled an end to the first fight, negotiations were underway for a rematch. If Tyson Ruddock Part 2 is as entertaining as the pre fight festivities, it should be a knockout. Charlie Steiner sets the scene. The rematch began the instant their first encounter ended, three months ago. Tyson applies the pressure. He's got it where he wants him now. Got the sense that Ruddock surrendered at that time? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely did, you know. He had had it. Surrendered. If I'd, if I'd have surrendered, would I have said to him, what are you, what? Thank you, and welcome back to the desert okay. in Las Vegas. And someday they may call this night Operation Desert Sham. You had a fighter named Iron, a fighter named Razor, and the fight was decided by a man named Steele. No, nah, he, he was gone. He was going to get hurt. I don't, I don't want to count him out when he's flat on his back. Let him fight again. First of all, I could have got hit, and I could have recovered, because I recovered from a lot worse shot than that before, you know? And I didn't, I, I said, what, what, what? You know what I mean? And because he didn't even ask me if you're OK. He, he wasn't going to last the round. I don't know how long, how many seconds was left in the round, but he wasn't going to last the round. I, I swear to God, I asked Murad, I told him I hey. smell a rat, Murad. Hey, uh, There's a conflict of interest here, okay? Is. Richard Steele's work uh, for, work for I, Steve Wynn. Richard Steele, he beat us. Richard Steele beat us. Hey. How many of you want to see a rematch? If y'all truly want to respect the rules and the controversy of thinking that something may or may not have been wrong, get your next referee and bring him on back again. I fear no man, no mortal, nobody but God, so we can do it again. I'd love a rematch. Let's get it on. If y'all want it on, yes. you get it. Oh, I love you. You see what he just said? We're going to get our rights so the fight is on. Gentlemen, but little did Muhammad know how win. difficult so that would be. To the fights now, and at this moment, the Tyson-Ruddock rematch scheduled for June 28th has been postponed. Ruddock had supposedly pulled out to make room for a Tyson-Holyfield matchup, but then said he wouldn't fight unless his promoter could promote. 
And while Muhammad continued his protests about the controversial finish to the first fight, he would be suspended from promoting in the state of Nevada for the next year for his part in that post-fight free-for-all and for his subsequent failure to show up at the hearing. His reason for the no-show was no sleep. For the first time in boxing history where excuses are about as plentiful as palookas, a sleeping disorder was used as the reason for Murad Muhammad missing the commission hearing. But despite his absence, the fight would go on after all. I'm not going to deprive the people out there because of my difference with the Nevada Commission. The lunacy continued at a satellite news conference with Tyson in Vegas and Ruddock in New York. It was truly transcontinental. We'll see. We'll see. You know you're really a transvestite and you like me. <laughs> I'm not going to dignify that with an answer, but uh, do I have to sit here and listen to this moron? Richard Steele, I don't think, will be on hand, unless he's a spectator. He'll buy a ticket. Mills Lane will be ringside as your referee. He probably has already uh, received a little bit of uh, encouragement. Let him go. You think? Let him go at it. Yeah, Pitt later will visit with Mike Tyson, who it seems has as many personalities as he does moods. He will talk about that. The champion in history has either lost the fire or lost the control of his remarkable abilities now that he's trying to win back his belts. Mike Tyson already has lived enough for several lifetimes, which begs the question, does anyone really know this man? Charlie Steiner takes a stab. Is this the real Mike Tyson, who throws things at cameras, including his fists? Or is this the real Mike Tyson, the doting daddy of 13-month-old D'Amato? Is this the real Mike Tyson, who has had more battles with the media, it seems, than he's had in the ring? Or is this the real Mike Tyson, the occasionally accommodating public figure who signs autographs for his fans? The appeal of Mike Tyson seems to be these contradictions. Which Tyson will show up on which day? On this day, the former heavyweight champion brought his son and was charming and thoughtful about his line of work. People say, are you valid? You know what I mean? They make that statement all the time thinking that I go on a ramp, I'm, I'm very violent, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's the line of my job. The line of my job is very violent, and that's just the way I am as an individual as far as my occupation is concerned. As Tyson speaks of his violence, he softly plays with his child. Say hi, Charlie. The model, say hi, Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. I don't think like the average person thinks. I can't wait to the 28th. I'm going to make you my girlfriend. <laughs> Tyson prides himself on being unpretentious. He makes no bones about the fact that he doesn't like people who are. I can't wait to get a hold of you, you little pretty thing, you. His verbal shots at Donovan Ruddock, he says, were designed to puncture what he perceived to be Ruddock's overly proper nature. He killed me when I see these guys. They get their suits on and they start, well, Dear Rick, leave my addiction to precarity for your comprehension. I'll endeavor to exclaim any more profound in the future from this part. And it's just all, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? To think of it, look at this guy. He knows, you know what I mean? He, you know what I mean? This is not really him. That's all a facade. Mike Tyson has never had a warm relationship with the media. This recent 31-paragraph USA Today article chronicled his recent transgressions, some of them painfully real, some of them rumored. I'm not asking for any pity, but no one ever comes to the source. They always say, I have a source. No one ever comes to the real source and say, Mike, did you do this and do that? They can probably say, I will tell you the truth. If I did anything, and that's I'm out outrageous and ironic, which I'm known to do, I'll say, yeah, I did it. Even though you guys put me through the, um, the hell that I go through and all this stuff, I actually, I, believe it or not, I love this. I love fighting. And it is also clear that he loves his son. Ah, uh, boxing weigh-ins. Closest thing to my favor, the boxing press conference. Mike Tyson, Donovan Razor Ruddick will weigh in on Wednesday. We'll have it live on SportsCenter, a special one-hour edition at 7 Eastern time. Then Friday night after the fight, live reports and interviews from Las Vegas. I don't know, I think maybe a decision for Tyson. Maybe Ruddick knows how to stay out of harm's way this time. I think he's got a great chance this time, but I love Tyson. I still think he's the best boxer in the game. Can knock him out? Yeah. No. From the Methinks Thou Doth Protest Too Much department. A little bit of a hoopla going on in Las Vegas. And of course, 
Mike Tyson at the center of it, and who is at the center of it with Mike Tyson? You guessed it, folks, Don King. This was at the press conference. They wheeled in Mike Tyson. Now, this is a gag, folks. This is a joke. <laughs> to show that he is not hurt like everyone says, and they also want to show that he and Don King like each other. You love me, Mike? Love you. All right. Did you see that? Do you understand that? Can you bleed your little eyes? <laughs> is that great television? Well, it certainly is. I don't know what else it is, but it's great television. They want to show the world that all these rumors swirling around that bout, that number one, Tyson's not training, he's hurt, that uh, he and Don King are having fights and hitting each other, that they are false, and they did their best to uh, send those rumors packing. We'll see if they did. They did their best, and the question is, was their best good enough? That is the big question. They used to have television programs like that in the past, and when somebody did that, they gave them a refrigerator. Yeah, I don't know. True. We'll see. Are they pals or are they enemies? The adventure continues, but Ringside Report doesn't. This has been Ringside Report, a weekly magazine of boxing news. You know, putting Mike Tyson and Razor Reddick in the same area code, let alone the same room, is kind of like putting two cats in a bag. Something bad is bound to happen. And Friday night, they meet in Las Vegas for the second time in a little over three months. Our Nick Charles has been on the strip all week and is there right now with Mike. And Nick, I know boys will be boys, but geez. Well, Fred, you heard Mike Tyson. He was heartily sorry for what he said the, uh, about uh, Razor Ruddick. Uh, Mike, you're with us. He had some fun today. Were you sorry? Yeah, oh, you yeah, actually oh, apologize? Oh, yeah. I'm very sorry. Well, <laughs> I understand what sorry. you're saying. What about Ruddick? Do you have a, is there a personal dislike for him? Tell me about How do you feel about him personally? It's when, it's when, I mean, I take my personal opinion. I think he's a big phony. You know what I mean? He's a good fighter. I respect him as a fighter, but that's about it. You know, he's a big phony because Friday night I'm going to put a hold in him. And I mean, see what, what he's really made out of. You feel you really have to go out and savage this guy? Absolutely. Why? Because I want to have a good display and I want to make, you know I mean, an example. What if you can't blow him out of there right away? Yeah, regardless, I, 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 I ain't no confidence I can beat Raven Ruddick. You know I mean, everybody always say, you know I mean, well, he's ready for you this time. Okay, he's ready. They, what do they think I do? You know what I mean? They think that you sit down and <laughs> wait till the day of the fight and just come in the ring. What about the criticism? Now, Mike Tyson's lost his fire, his emotional fire. He's been too successful. How do you answer Come your critics? On, uh, you know what I mean? You've got you to understand this. These people, they, 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 they went to school. They went out and played. They've they done all other sports. When the these guys were doing that, I was in the gym. I was 12, 13. I was in the gym, and I was serious. I'm, I was very serious. It's, you know what I mean? I'm true to this business. You know what I mean? It's no, no way I'm, you know, I'm going to be like some washed up guy. You know what I mean? I'm probably only 25 and I've been doing this mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I love what I do. I love what I do. Mike, what motivates you? How do you build that emotional fire in your belly? Yeah, I tell you something. Regardless, you know, some nights like I told you, you have bad nights. I used to love to fight. What goes on in your mind? I was telling you, when I'm at ringside, my heart's pounding. I envision what's going to happen. Is Tyson going to throw his jab? Is Ruddick going to do this? The con what about you when you're in there? I just, I, just, I just want blood. I just, I'm just into it. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, complex high to explain because, you know, I, I just want this guy bad. I just want him. Hmm. What else can you tell us? Is it, do you just feel really alive when you're testing your nerve? I mean, you feel that it's just an unfinished job here. You just have to put everything on the line. There's nothing like fighting for you. I, I love, you know, I mean, I used to love a great challenge. You know what I mean? I love it. How great a whack does this guy have? Do you have caution signals? What warning signals when you see him? You fought him once. What happens in a rematch? I'm just like I was telling you before, I'm just, I'm extremely confident, you know what I mean? And, you know what I mean, and it's, it's hard, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, to define the individual's tactics, but you know, they say they change, and I, and I never make a game plan. I just go out there, and I just, I'm um, playing by ear. Just put the, the pressure, you know what I mean, see how he reacts in certain situations. Fighters exploit their strengths, mask their weaknesses, and exploit their, or expose the weaknesses of the other guy. What's his soft underbelly, and what do you expect him to do differently, Mike? I don't know, and I, I mean, really don't care. You know, I don't care what he does. I mean, I don't care about what I do. I mean, I just, I just want his soul. You know, I just want to take his soul. Just rip his heart off, huh? Exactly. Um, what about Don King? Set the record straight. I was with you eight days ago. We talked. Mm -hmm. But for people who haven't seen that, what's the relationship has Don, Don King Don is delivered? my man. You know what I mean? Don has delivered everything you know what I mean, that I asked for. So there's no problem. You guys are. As, as my position and financial, I, everything I asked for, I've gotten. And the title coming up, uh, can that wait? You, you know what I mean? It can wait under certain, under certain circumstances. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be I'm treated like a common opponent. You know what I mean? I've, I've, 
I won the championship. I cleaned the division up. You know what I mean? I unified the title. I made, and I've only been champion three and a half years, and when I made 12 title defenses, you know what I mean? And, and that's for only three and a half years. Mm -hmm. I imagine I, I was continuing, because I, mean, I was fighting very often. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I, I, I put too much, you know what I mean? I gave too much and contributed too much to the game to be treated like a common opponent. So you're hungry? Somebody to say, give me, I'll give you $12,000, and I'll take 25000 Hey, you can't, you can't treat me like that when I'm the ticket sale. Is Mike Tyson back, or you've never been away? You're as I, hungry I, as ever? I've never been away. You know what I mean? I didn't fall off. I just slipped one night. Okay. Good to see you, Mike. Okay? Great. We'll see you Friday night in the ring against Razor Ruddick. I'll be there. And Fred, we'll see you out here tomorrow. Thursday night, our coverage continues all week here from the Mirage in Las Vegas. Now back to Atlanta. Okay, Dick. Thanks a lot, and save a seat. I'm still trying to figure out if Mike was sincere. I'm not sure. Mike, sincere? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But if the fight is anywhere near... No, I mean about brutal... the apology. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> On the way? Yeah. Well, you never know. I wouldn't yeah. argue with him. No. I mean, Mike Tyson and Razor Ruddick is just three days away, but you somehow get the feeling that they could hype this one every day for the next three months, and every day the names of Evander Holyfield and George Foreman would still manage to steal some of the thunder. Tuesday, Tyson and Ruddick answered their last pre-fight questions, but... It's doubtful we've heard the last of the questions regarding Mr. Holyfield and Foreman. Charlie Steiner reports from Las Vegas. This was the final news conference before Friday night's fight. The king was on his throne, and Muhammad had returned to the mountain because a local judge ruled yesterday that Razor Ruddock's promoter, Murad Muhammad, could in fact promote again, at least for the time being. Welcome, Murad. I'm glad to have you back. Due process, do work. Mike Tyson likes these pre-fight news conferences about as much as he likes his opponent, which is to say, not a lot. Knock him out. Knock him out. There's no elaboration. Knock him out. What he's saying is, is irrelevant because the fact is that we're going to knock out each other. Oh, and about those nasty things Tyson had to say about Ruddock at last month's news conference? I'm sorry, Ray, that I called you bad names. <laughs> While Tyson was making it all better with Ruddock, the plans for his future, assuming he wins, are far less certain. Evander Holyfield, the champion, continues to pursue Tyson, the challenger. He says he wants to fight, you know what I mean, with his mouth. But you, you never heard him, you never seen him come up to me and say, Mike, let's get it on. I want Mike right now. I don't want nobody else but Mike Tyson right now. That's what Tyson told us 12 days ago. So Evander Holyfield responded by placing an ad in all the Las Vegas newspapers. And as they continue to prepare the ring for Friday night's fight here at the Mirage, Evander Holyfield continues to hope for his showdown someday with Mike Tyson. Meanwhile, George Foreman was expected to arrive here in Las Vegas sometime tonight. Don King was hoping he would sign Foreman for a Tyson fight in early November. But Foreman, we're told, is not going anywhere. He's staying home in Texas for the moment. He's weighing two other offers. One for a rematch with Evander Holyfield for early November. And the other offer ESPN has learned has been for George Foreman to star in his own television series in which he would star as a boxer. Only in America. I'm Charlie Steiner, ESPN at the Mirage in Las Vegas. Now let's go back to Sports Center. All right, thank you, Charlie. And back to Tyson and Ruddy for a moment. They'll weigh in Wednesday night. You can see coverage of that, plus a live interview with Mike Tyson during the hour-long edition of SportsCenter from 7 to 8 Eastern Time Wednesday. Showtime takes an inside look at the most powerful machine in boxing, Team Tyson. We're very secure what we do. Our team is very comfortable of what each position that every person does and plays. Every person plays an important part in our team, and that's why it's called Team Tyson. We're team players. And when you're a team player, you're not insecure of what you do. They're insecure. Everybody's there is trying to whoop and tell you something completely different than what it is. The fighter is the main object. The fighter is the gladiator. We get help, get him Team Tyson gets our fighter mentally, physically prepared to go out there to do what he does best. Keep on your own weight. Keep it together. Keep it together with you. Time. Mike is a human being. And Mike doesn't train, prepare himself, condition himself better than any other fighter in the world. He's nobody different than any other fighter in the world. 
He's not Iron Mike. He's human Mike. That's why he's here training. That's why he's here doing his hard work. That's why he's prepared for this fight. Mike Tyson is, is, uh, is one of the best fighters that I've ever seen, and only time will tell whether he'll become the best of all times. He's a young man that is uh, dedicated and committed to fighting. He's a warrior. He comes in with no ostentatiousness, no pretentiousness. He goes in there to fight. Team Tyson, with, with Tyson being the supreme master and the leader of the team, we're on our way because when Mike speaks, I listen, and he's the boss. Mike pretty much you know, knows what he has to do and doesn't really need nobody to pat him on the back and say, Yo, come on, man, let's do this, do that. And although we do, because we love him. Mike is a very gentle person. You see a different person you do in the ring. You see a gentleman, a nice man, a caring man, a man that, you know, appreciates things. My team Tyson, um, mostly after fights, we're together, we hang out, we have fun, we go to families. All our families are close to one another because it's a family. Mike Tyson outside the ring is the most easygoing, fun-loving guy in the world. I mean, all he wants to do is have fun. And he fights to be able to walk down the street to people and say he's the best. You know, it's not, it's not about money because he fights for his people. He fights for the public. Fighting Mike Tyson! You'll see Team Tyson in action only on Showtime. Just how heavy is the heavy metal in Vegas? For Iron Mike and Razor Ruddick, the waiting is over. Will Tyson be reeling or wheeling and dealing in the ring and in front of our cameras? The more um, vindictive articles, you know, perverted articles I hear, I go out there and I want to annihilate them, I want to kill them. Draft, the same can be said for Friday night's heavyweight showdown in Las Vegas. The rematch between Mike Tyson and Razor Ruddick. And today, the weigh-in. At first glance, it might seem like everything's the same as it was back in March. Tyson appears to be the same. As for Ruddick, well, he's there, of course. Now there's just more of him. Here's Charlie Steiner in Las Vegas. Well, thank you, fellas, and welcome to the Mirage here in Las Vegas, where this morning the weigh-in took place, five hours earlier than any of us had expected. Nonetheless, we were here, and that was only the first piece of unusual business. The second piece was this. Don King, stepping on the scales first. We're pleased to report that as a public service, his weight was not announced. And then the main event. The first of the two who stepped on the scale, Donovan Razor Ruddock. In the first fight, he weighed in at 228 pounds. Today, he was a bigger man. Razor Ruddock, 238! Razor Ruddock, 238! So Ruddick weighs 10 pounds more than he did just three months ago. But he says it's part of a grand design. We, um, we've been on a special diet this time, and we've been training very hard, so we just came in at a natural weight. So we weren't trying to um, cram a, a special weight. Three months ago, back in March here at the Mirage, Mike Tyson weighed 217 pounds. Today, he looks just about the same. Mike Tyson, 216! So Mike Tyson weighs in a pound lighter than he did for his first fight at 216 pounds. This, of course, the ESPN boxing analyst, Molly Matthews. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now. The one pound for Tyson, a uh, pound lighter than the first fight, inconsequential. But the real story, I think, is that Donovan Razor Ruddock, 10 pounds heavier than he was only three months ago. Yeah, and I, I really wonder about that. You know, he tells us, uh, on one hand, that he feels that he had, did not have enough movement in the first fight with Tyson, that he stood right in front of him and uh, made himself too easy a target. And then he comes in 10 pounds heavier for the rematch, which you would think will take away some of his mobility. Apparently, the thinking there is that he overtrained a bit for the first fight and that he needs to be a little bit stronger to muscle with Tyson in the clinches. His training methods at best have been curious. For the first fight, he did not spar at all to speak of for the final three weeks leading up to the fight. And now there's talk that he may be overworked. You know, it's very, very uh, difficult to get accurate information out of the Ruddick camp. For the first fight, he didn't spar a good 21 days before the fight, but they insisted that that was strategy, that they did not want to burn out before the fight. Then, of course, most of our suspicions uh, came true. The, the talk is that he had an injured left hand in that fight, and that's why he didn't spar. This time, he sparred right up until the Monday before the fight, and he still comes in 10 pounds heavier. So I have to wonder if maybe he added sparring but cut out something else. 
Now, in terms of uh, th that extra weight, you and I have certainly covered enough fights here in the desert over the years. Does that extra weight really help him, or is that too much baggage under the, the hot, uh, hot air in the desert? Well, one of their concerns is that the temperature will be up in the high 90s on fight night, and uh, they say that Ruddick can lose as much as 10 pounds in a sparring session. So maybe what they're thinking is, is to add a little extra cushion that they expect him to lose in the course of the fight rather than become dehydrated. I mean, I remember a fight with Barry McGuigan and Stevie Cruz about five years ago where you could actually see McGuigan had lost weight in the course of the fight. He came in at 126. He may have left the ring at about 119, and he left without his title. So we'll find out soon enough come Friday night and coming up a little bit later on the special one-hour edition of Sports Center, the origins of this most unusual rematch and the final interview before Friday night's fight with Mike Tyson. Now let's go back to Sports Center. Boxing on his best days is the most unusual preoccupation and for some of us an occupation. The rematch, however, for this particular event has been, by all standards, at the very least, most unusual. The rematch began the instant their first encounter ended, three months ago. Tyson applies the pressure. He's got him where he wants him now. got the sense that Ruddock surrendered at that time? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I definitely did, you know. He had had it. Surrendered. If I if would have surrendered, would I have said to him, what are you, what? Thank you, and welcome back to the desert okay. in Las Vegas. Okay. Someday they may call this night Operation Desert Sham. You had a fighter named Iron, a fighter named Razor, and the fight was decided by a man named Steele. No, he, he was done. He was going to get hurt. I don't, I don't want to count him out when he's flat on his back. Let him fight again. First of all, I could have got hit, and I could have recovered, because I recovered from a lot worse shot than that before, you know? And I didn't, I, I said, what, what, what? You know what I mean? And because he didn't even ask me if you're OK. He, he wasn't going to last the round. I don't know how long, how many seconds was left in the round, but he wasn't going to last the round. I, I swear to God, I asked Murad, I told him I hey. smell a rat, Murad. Hey, uh, There's a conflict of interest here, OK? Richard Steele's work for, work for I, Steve Wynn. Richard Steele, he beat us. Richard Steele beat us. Hey. How many of you want to see a rematch? If y'all truly want to respect the rules and the controversy of thinking that something may or may not have been wrong, get your next referee and bring him on back again. I fear no man, no mortal, nobody but God, so we can do it again. I'd love a rematch. Let's get it on. If y'all want it on, yes. you got it. Oh, I love you. You see what he just said? We're going to get our rights so the fight is on. Gentlemen, but little did Muhammad know how win. difficult oh, that like would be. To the fights now, and at this moment, the Tyson-Ruddick rematch scheduled for June 28th has been postponed. Ruddick had supposedly pulled out to make room for a Tyson-Holyfield matchup, but then said he wouldn't fight unless his promoter could promote. And while Muhammad continued his protests about the controversial finish to the first fight, he would be suspended from promoting in the state of Nevada for the next year for his part in that post-fight free-for-all and for his subsequent failure to show up at the hearing. His reason for the no-show was no sleep. For the first time in boxing history where excuses are about as plentiful as palookas, a sleeping disorder was used as the reason for Murad Muhammad missing the commission hearing. But despite his absence, the fight would go on after all. I'm not going to deprive the people out there because of my difference with the Nevada commission. The lunacy continued at a satellite news conference with Tyson in Vegas and Ruddock in New York. It was truly transcontinental. We'll see. We'll see. You know you're really a transvestite and you like me. <laughs> I'm not going to dignify that with an answer, but uh, do I have to sit here and listen to this moron? And by a court decision earlier this week, Murad Muhammad is in fact now back in the promotion as officially Razor Ruddock's promoter. Joining us now, as we record this interview just a few minutes after the weigh-in, 
Mighty Mike Tyson. 216 pounds, a pound lighter than uh, the last fight. I guess it's really not any of any consequence at all. Well, I have been training hard. Mike, the fact that you, you've gotten so much negative media going into this thing, is it, is it some sense of satisfaction you can show everybody you are in fact in shape at 260? I never, I never make any big issue or nothing about that what people write about me. The more they write, the more negative they write, the more I take it out on my opponents. The more um, vindictive articles, you know, perverted articles I hear, I go out there and I want to annihilate, I want to kill them. I get that sense that this is kind of a jump start for you. I mean, this is almost something you needed. Uh, no, no, that's just how it would be. You know what I mean? Everyone that writes bad about me, which they really don't care about my opponent, I proved all of them wrong by the way I dismantled them. Why do you suppose you're getting the, the negative press? I don't listen. Basically, it's because rumors that go around from people that don't know, that don't know me, or people basically that was involved with me at one time. Anyone that interviews me, no one ever, anyone that writes these articles never interview me or anyone from our camp that know anything about me. They go to the source that's um, on the other side. I mean, then if they do that, they're going to get negative. So you know how it is. They're right bad about you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's nice to hear. Um, what did you learn about Ruddick in the first fight that you're going to carry into uh, Friday night? Just can't be. When you go into a fight with that lack of respect, does it make it easier for you to just bore in on him? I never disrespect anyone's skill. I never take it. You know what I mean? I used to know him the best. Regardless if you have a bad night, regardless, I mean, that's not the issue. The issue is who's the best, man for man. You said, in essence, he hit like a mule after the fight. Uh, I, mean, I think that's what you said. Uh, have you ever been hit any harder? You know, I mean, he put me through some good shots. You know, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to um, evaluate the punch. What the hell, you know what I mean? It's just a punch. I'm in the hurt business. The sense that a lot of people seem to get is twofold. One, perhaps Japan was the best thing that ever happened to you in that you could redirect yourself physically and emotionally. And two, the negative media is also a, kind of a jump start in that, in that same Tokyo sense. Is that fair to say? Listen, I don't like losing, regardless, that's ridiculous, that, that was the best thing for me, it's the worst thing. I hate losing, I'm a sore loser, I don't like to lose. And you know what I mean? About people writing about me, I don't like people writing about me saying things that's not true. If you're going to say anything about me, come ask me and find out. And you ask me about it, and I'll tell you if it's true or not. In the first fight, you did not come storming out of the corner as you historically have. Can we expect to see that fast start on Friday night? I'm in great shape, and I'm prepared to go all night. Good luck on Friday night. Yeah. Iron Mike Tyson as he gets ready for his fight on Friday night with Donovan Razor Ruddick. Now let's go back to sports. Oh, back in March here at the Mirage, Mike Tyson weighed 217 pounds. Today he looked just about the same. Mike Tyson, 216! I never disrespect anyone's skill. I never take, you know what I mean? I just know him the best. Regardless if you have a bad night, regardless, I mean, that's not the issue. The issue is who's the best man for man you said in essence he hit like a mule after the fight uh and he mike tyson who turns 25 next week is actually one pound lighter than he was when he fought ruddock the first time and the storyline perhaps going into friday night is ruddock's weight 10 pounds more than he weighed back on march 18. Ruddick did not really take great advantage of the reach difference in the first fight. The fist's really inconsequential, but that record, Mike Tyson, despite all the criticism he has taken, is still 40 and 1 with 36 knockouts. That's going to do it for us here at the Mirage. I want to remind you tomorrow, a conversation with Donovan Razor Ruddick and some analysis of Mike Tyson, the fighter. For now, I'm Charlie Steiner at the Mirage, and now let's go back to Sports Center. Thank you, Charlie. With apologies to Reggie Jackson, who is Mr. October, Mike Tyson is Mr. June. In his career, Iron Mike has never lost in this month. These are all of his fights in his career during the month of June. His range of opponents, though, have ranged from the talented Michael Spinks to something called Rick Spain.
We will hear a little bit more from Mike Tyson later on during this edition of Sports Center. Rick Mike's not at the tables. Mike's not watching a show tonight. Mike is thinking about the fight. He is very focused. He was ready to take Charlie's head off. That guy who looked a lot like me the other night said a decision, no way. Uh, can I amend that? Three, you round, may. three rounds. And It'll we will have a conversation with Ruddick tomorrow evening. And we will also be live here Friday evening right after the fight with the greatest theater in the world. The boxing press conference and interviews with the combatants after Tyson Ruddick 2. I'm not very generous. I'm generous to people that have a need. I mean, like, I know a guy, like, if I see a bum guy, a bum in the street and stuff, and I give him $1,000, I know he needs it, but I know he's not going to do the right thing with it. But, you know, from my perspective, I know I gave it to him for the right thing. So hopefully if I die, God will see that, I'll go to heaven. You will see Tyson in action only on Showtime. Ringside Report, a weekly magazine of boxing news. Brought to you tonight by Ace Hardware Corporation. Ace is the place. Well, we don't often have guests on Ringside oh, Report, nice. but it really is a pleasure to welcome our cohort, Sports Center's Charlie Steiner. Charlie, you've been around here all week, of course, for the Tyson Ruddick fight. Chaos this week, it seems, here in Las Vegas. Well, it seems as if it's a Don King production from the get go. It's almost as if the uh, pay per view people have deferred all of everything to Don King. He makes a final decision on everything up to it, including rescheduling the way in five hours earlier than everybody expected on less than 12 hours of notice for reasons utterly unbeknownst to us. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of a strange week, but uh, as far as the fighters are concerned, I think it's pretty much more of the same. Although I think we're seeing more of the same of Mike Tyson, the old same Mike Tyson, and I think that may be the story tomorrow night. It seems, Charlie, that the onus in this bout seems to be on Razor Ruddick. Our questions are, can he change anything from the first fight? Well, one thing he certainly did change was his weight. He's 10 pounds heavier than he was just a three months ago and he came in at 228 pounds back on uh, March the 18th and now he's 238 pounds in the first uh, outing Razor Ruddick seemed to be nervous going in but as he spoke to Wally Matthews he did have something to learn could be, could be true I mean uh, what, what, what am I to say I don't know maybe I was excited but you know we're gonna try and do it a little different we're gonna try everything that um, we think that was um, against us we're gonna try it a little different all right. Briefly, can you compare your state of mind for me this close to the rematch as compared with two days before the first fight? Well, I think I'm a little more relaxed, and, um, you know, I'm trying to keep everything into perspective and, and say that, you know, it's the second time around. I should do it right this time. It's like a second marriage. Mike Tyson, of course, weighed in yesterday at 216 pounds, a pound lighter than he was just uh, three months ago. Uh, the sense that I got about Mike Tyson is that he is angry about the avalanche of negative publicity in the media, but this time around he is angry and he is confident and ready to go. I never disrespect anyone's skill. I never take, you know what I mean? I just, I just know I'm the best. Regardless if you have a bad night, regardless, I mean, that's not the issue. The issue is who's the best, man for man. You said, in essence, he hit like a mule after the fight. I think that's what you said. Um, have you ever been hit any harder? You know, I mean, he caught me with some good shots. You know, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to um, evaluate the punch. What the hell? You know, I mean, it's just a punch. I'm in the hurt business. So that was the story. All right, let me ask you. We'll give our predictions later, but how do you see it? I, I can't get over the fact that it's going to be over early. I can't see that uh, Ruddick's going to do anything fundamentally different at this point. The fact that he put on 10 pounds, he needed more lateral movement than he showed in the first fight. Certainly not going to get it with 10 more pounds. So my guess is it's going to be over early, a round or two. All right, I'm not going to give my prediction. That's exactly what I was going to say. Oh, right darn it. Charlie stole your thunder. Yeah, he really does did. that. Charlie, thanks for being with us. Good to be here. Nice to be underdressed yeah, compared to you guys. For a he looks good. He's looking good. Oh, I've been saying that all night. Have you noticed that? And how we see the Ruddick Tyson fight. So let me ask you. Well, I'm going to disagree with Charlie, and apparently you also. I don't think it's going to be that quick. I think it's going to be very similar to the first bout. I think somewhere along the line in the first three or four rounds, Mike Tyson's going to hurt Razor Ruddick, maybe knock him down. Then Razor Ruddick is going to knock Mike, hurt Mike Tyson a little bit. And then Mike Tyson's going to get to him in the middle rounds, probably, and uh, probably knock Razor Ruddick out or score a TK. Charlie, what does Al Bernstein know about uh, boxing? I agree with Charlie completely. I think it's going to be, it could be a one-round fight, maybe a two-round fight. I think Tyson is hungry. I think he's lean. And that diet that Razor Ruddick's on, I don't want to be on. <laughs> this has been Ringside Report, a weekly magazine of boxing news. Brought to you tonight by Ace Hardware Corporation. Ace is the place.
Sports Center is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Lights. Welcome back. It was back in March that the third man in the ring made the most news when Mike Tyson stopped Razor Ruddick in the seventh round. Tomorrow night they will get it on and don't look for referee Mills Lane to be stepping between them except to stop each round. We're ready to go several rounds with our Vegas contingent headed up by Charlie Snyder. Well, thanks, Bob. This time tomorrow, give or take a couple of minutes, we will know the outcome of the Ruddock Tyson 2 fight. But the number one story around here this day is the future, what if any, of Holyfield Tyson 1. To that end, Mike Tyson was the recipient of this letter from Dan Duva, who is Holyfield's promoter, saying a major stumbling block has been removed. There are no options for any future fights. What's interesting is that this letter was sent directly to Mike Tyson, bypassing Don King. We showed him a copy of that letter this morning, and just because it says no options, it still doesn't mean there's any deal. And let's see what we got here. Oh, no, 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 no. This is what a $15 million contract with no options looks like. But it's still not good enough for Don King, who wants $25 million. And then he says you got a deal. He also says he won't even be a part of the next promotion. He'll hand all the promotional reins over to the Duvas. Give this guy a chance to at least promote a heavyweight title fight. Hey, no problem with that. I, don't want no, I won't go to no press conference. I won't have nothing to do with the fight, period. So Duva can get all the light that will not eclipse you, Dan. <laughs> I know I'm a bright sun. I'm Leo the Lion. I know, but I will not eclipse you. I will not even get in your way. Just tell me where you want Tyson to be, and we will bring him there. You use him for that day, and that's the end of it. And so meantime, the playing continues. Somebody who's been overlooked in all of this is Donovan Razor Ruddock, who happens to be the opponent once again for Mike Tyson tomorrow night. Wally Matthews caught up with the other guy in this story. Thanks, Charlie. Donovan, at the weigh-in, you weigh 238 pounds. That's 10 pounds more than the first time you fought Tyson. What was the thinking in coming in that much heavier? Well, we weren't thinking about coming in heavier. We were just thinking about coming in stronger. And we trained very hard for the fight. We are in good shape. And um, whatever weight we came in, at, it was accepted because we know we did what we did. All right, but the perception of most people is going to be that to come in 10 pounds heavier means less work was well, done. Did you well, change uh, your training routine? I'm not even going to think about what people are going to think because, first of all, they don't fight. I'm the one who do the fighting, so it would be stupid if I think about what they're saying. Okay, now the weigh-in was something like 50 hours before the actual bell of the fight. How much do you think you'll weigh by fight time? I really don't know. I'm just, I, I do the thing that I've been doing naturally every day, and I don't know, know exactly. I probably weigh the same thing, 238. That's my natural weight. And it's not like um, you see any fat on me or anything like that. It's 238 solid. Okay, now for the first fight, the rumor was that you had a bad right hand and you did not spar for anywhere between 10 days and three weeks before the fight. Now, this time, are you sound and how bad was the hand in the first fight? Well, like I told everyone before, and they won't never listen, I told them that my right hand was not bad. I abandoned it because I've been so successful with my, um, my left hand all through my career. So I was slowly dependent on it all through the fight. So it wasn't bad. We, we went back to the training. We had an opportunity, second opportunity now to um, fight him again. So we went back on to the drawing board and we started using the right hand a lot more. So basically you're going to see more right hand or whatever it takes. Now have you sparred right up until fight time or within days of the fight this time? Well we, we finished our sparring yes, um, two days ago and um, we, we're, very, we're, we're, we're satisfied with what we already, we already accomplished. Do you think cutting off sparring early for the first fight was a mistake? Nah, I don't think so. I think we should have, um, uh, I think we should have control it a lot more than um, for the first fight. We should have controlled it a lot more than, than for the first fight. All right, another thing that you might have to control for this fight is your emotions going in. One thing that we're told was that you were very, very hyped up before the first fight and that may have robbed you of some energy. Is that true? true could be. It could be true. I mean, uh, who, who, who am I to say? I don't know. Maybe I was excited, but, you know, we're going to try and do it a little different. We're going to try everything that um, we think that was um, against us. We're going to try it a little different. All right. Briefly, can you compare your state of mind for me this close to the rematch as compared with two days before the first fight? Well, I think I'm a little more relaxed and, um, you know, I'm trying to keep everything into perspective and, and say that, you know, it's the second time around, I should do it right this time. It's like a second marriage. It may be a second marriage, all right, for Donovan Ruddock and Mike Tyson tomorrow night here at the Mirage, but I think it's fair to assume there will not be much of a love connection in the ring. Coming up later here from Las Vegas, Mike Tyson, the fighter. Has he lost it? Are his skills diminishing? We'll have that story a bit later on. Now let's go back to Sports Center. Bob? 
Thanks, Charlie. Uh, Razor saying, uh, don't worry, man, about the 238. That's quite heavy, though. 11 right. pounds more than the first fight. If you saw last night the chat that uh, Charlie had with Mike Tyson, as focused, as, as single-minded, and, and surly as most fighters get to be as you get closer and closer to fight time, uh, I think three rounds to see you. I think Tyson, I think it'll take longer than that. A little later, as you heard Charlie mention, we'll go back to Vegas to look at the evolution, or is it the evolution of Tyson's fighting style? It's going to be just payday for Mike Tyson and Donovan. <laughs> Prevailing stories about Mike Tyson coming into this fight is whether or not he has lost it, or at the very least, is he losing it? Are his skills diminishing? Is the fire gone? Some of the questions that we pose to some of boxing's best experts. It's been 16 months since Mike Tyson went looking for his mouthpiece in Tokyo. Prior to the Douglas fight, and ever since, the question continues to be asked. At the age of 24, has Mike Tyson already passed his peak? I do not know, nor do I want to practice psychiatry without a license, what the problem is, but it ain't the same Mike Tyson. If he could be disciplined, he could probably go back and, and still improve a lot more, but I just think the discipline is out of his life. I think time will show that what I'm saying, understand, is going to be the right thing because he can only go down, not up. If you train hard for a fight, you're in the gym maybe two hours a day, but you have another 22 hours to kill, and that's when I think he's getting himself out of shape. Yeah, I mean, that's so ridiculous. That's just people speaking because they don't know anything else to say. Well, I think Tyson a little bit more easy to hit. I don't believe that Mike Tyson is the same fighter. I, I saw a slow, I think, decline since he left Kevin Rooney. He's got to be concerned about his corner, too, which is a big minus for him. He doesn't put his punches together as well, and he shows you his punches. When he fought for Kevin Rooney, he didn't have a pattern, and that would made him so awesome. Customato said the one thing you must do is move your head when you throw a punch. He doesn't. He's not throwing the combinations that he used to throw when he was with Kevin Rooney. He's got to have somebody there that he can turn to, a corner he can turn to. And I don't know whether he's got that. He had that with Kevin Rooney. I think that his life has changed. You know, he got so much so soon, you know, at the age of 21, he's champion of the world. But the thing with Mike is, yes, he's a former champion, but he made so much money in boxing that he's, he, he still thinks he's the champion. He's the, the champion money earner. When Tyson meets Razor Ruddock again on Friday night here at the Mirage, Tyson will take on a two-handed fighter. Unlike the Ruddock who fought here against Tyson back in March. I think it's a good possibility that Razor Ruddock may come in a little more confident and maybe even a little bit more physically prepared uh, for this fight. If he can fight a more physical fight the first few rounds and get away with it, then I think that as every round goes by, after the fourth, fifth round, I think the fight's going to become an easier fight, and, they, and it will give him more of an opportunity to beat Mike Tyson. He didn't throw enough right hands in the last fight, so I will always be suspicious that something was wrong with it. Yeah, everyone's injured, you know, when they lose. They will have all kind of crutches and excuses they make when they lose. Well, you know, I mean, he had the second time to prove it. Now, what's going to happen after the second time? He's going to make another excuse? I thought Ruddick fought a terrible fight last time. He had no fight plan going in. He was the same punch over and over and over again. I think that he has a lot of room for improvement, and I don't think Mike has too much room for improvement. Why, why is it so difficult to say, God, Mike fought a good fight? He, you know what I mean? I won't even know that I'm the best fighter of my era. I proved it with Spink, and I'm going to prove it with him. Well, according to some, Mike Tyson's skills may be on the decline, but the fact of the matter is his record is 40 and 1, and he is a prohibitive favorite at about 5 to 1 to beat Donovan Razor Ruddock tomorrow night here at the Mirage in Las Vegas. Joining us now, ESPN boxing analyst Wally Matthews. Wally, what is your theory? Has Mike lost it, or is, is he losing it? Well, I, hate, I hesitate to say lost, because that implies he won't get it back. I think he may have misplaced some of the things that made him great earlier in his career. I mean, the combination punching to the body and head, which was one of the things that really attracted me to him early in his career, he doesn't do very much of that anymore. When's the last time you saw him throw that double right hand to the body and head that was so stunning against Trevor Burbick and against Rivalta? And also his left jab, which he actually out-jabbed Tony Tucker with. And Tony Tucker's a guy with an 85-inch reach. Tyson out jab him to win that fight. You never see him jab his way in anymore. To use the baseball analogy, in the old days, Mike Tyson could hit to all fields and have that more than occasional pop. Now it seems he's resigned to being just a home run hitter. 
Trump has resigned to it, but I think that's the only thing that really interests him anymore, is knocking people out. You know, you can hear it in the way he talks. He wants to kill opponents. He wants to smash their heads. All right, that's what he said earlier in his career, too. But at least he set it up with some finesse. Now it seems like the finesse is out the window when it's all just fresh. Question also going into this fight, the fire and desire of Mike Tyson. Is that on the wane? I think it has to be because this is a guy who's achieved all the goals that were set out for him. He wanted to be the youngest heavyweight champion in history. He became it. He wanted to earn the highest one-night purse in history. He earned it. I mean, what's left for him to do besides regain the title? And I don't think that intensity and desire is something you can turn on and off and will. And I think that's something that Mike's trying to do now. Wally Matthews will be joining us tomorrow night for our post-fight coverage along with Al Bernstein. We'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern time on Sports Center, and then during the ball game, as soon as the fight ends for all our post-fight coverage. For now, Charlie Steiner at the Mirage in Las Vegas, and let's go back to Sports Center. Be sure to join us, as Charlie said, round by round updates throughout tomorrow night's baseball doubleheader. Charlie, Al, and Wally back from Vegas with extensive post-fight coverage, including, of course, the press conferences live on ESPN. like no one can.